examples here. Some people might argue about a few things. Uh, let's look at uh, an example of somebody who, after doing a great work, he did his job and he got paid, probably he's paid weekly or twice a week, anytime he's paid. The next thing after getting the money is to go to casino, to go and gamble. And each time he goes, spend huge amount of money, everything he earns, and he loses. And he keeps doing it. Please, is that a devil? No. He is choice. He has done that to a certain level in his life. It has become addiction. What would make a man labor, hard work, get his money, now go throw it away? And go again the following week, work hard, get his money, and go throw it away. That on its own shows a man who is only satisfied with that gambling. Amen? Amen. What is it that satisfies you? Same thing with those of us that rejoice in the fact that we love the Lord. How many of you love the Lord? Raise your hand. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Okay. Did you love the Lord the day you were born? No, no. You don't even know the Lord. All you know is mommy and daddy and just to eat and that's all. And play around. But there came a time you were shown the way of salvation. And from then you began to take pleasure in that which God takes pleasure in. Amen. And from there you build it up and today become a standard that cannot be moved away from that principle regardless of what you're going through. So we need to understand that your delight, your meditation must be in the word. If I, whatever I meditate on, I become. If I meditate on, for example, I mean, you all know that I'm an, I'm an educator. I teach music, and in the classroom, when we want to play some music for, for the children, we have to look for clean version of such songs. Because some, most of those songs are filled with curse words. Mm. If the kids will be the first person, sir, could you look for the clean version? Because they know the, wrong, mm. they know the details of the wrong version. The world knows. That's why they have to. Now, this is not a church music. They know the evil they are doing. So they have to create what they call clean version of their song. Because they know what they are saying. It is ungodly. It does not add value to the society. In other words, that is not the action of a blessed man. So, and whatever you hear, the gate to your spirit is your ears, your eyes, and your mouth. Because you hear, you speak it. As you speak it, it comes back to you. Amen? Mm -hmm. And from there, what you see with your eyes, that's why the kind of movies we watch, the kind of music we listen to, they are part of the things that forms us and shapes our lives. That's why when we come gathering together as godly people, we need to understand these things. We are not just singing songs just, to, just for singing's sake. It's forming, it's shaping something in our mindset. By declaring, He is the way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. 
When you are not seeing it tomorrow, you are just walking. That word comes to your mind. When you are going through distress, I know he is a way maker. Mm -hmm. I know he is a light in darkness. Mm -hmm. Even though I cannot see now, I know he is doing something for me in the background. Mm -hmm. Number three says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water mm -hmm. that brings forth its fruits in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Now, the first question I ask here is, why does the scripture have to describe a blessed man with a tree? Every symbol that God uses in the scriptures has a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's like describing the Holy Spirit as a dove. There's a reason for that. Describing Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah, there's a reason for that. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, describing the blessed man as a tree, there is a reason for that. Let's look at it. Why tree? Why does the scripture describe a blessed man as a tree? Remember, food, temporary protection from the scourging of the sun, and ultimately, oxygen are received from trees. If you're walking, you, 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 you're walking in food, you know, and around and you're tired, you find a tree, it will cast shade, isn't it? Then you can sit under it. Temporary, pro, you know, protection from the scourging of the sun. And uh, we get food from trees. All our fruits, they come from there. Now, the ground up wood of, from the tree is used to make paper for magazines, newspapers, candy wrappers, cereal boxes, sap, the liquid that flows in trees is used to make maple syrup, chewing gum, crayons, paint and soap, dyes and medicine are made from the bark. While leaves and roots provide oils for cosmetics and medicines. Do you see a lot that we get from tree? So if the Bible is now talking about you as a blessed man, it means your presence can produce so many for humanity. That when people come to you, they can derive, they can receive godly counsel. They can receive godly direction. They can receive godly uh, 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 initi initiative from you. That is a blessed man. It means you, what, what you can produce can make people around you to be comfortable. Because we all use, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? We all eat fruit from the tree. And we, we, it's, what, what it gives to our body, it's pretty good. Amen? The vitamins we get from there. The soap, the paint, you know, the chewing gum, you know, all kinds of. So, if the blessed man is like a tree, then you need to think twice, sir and man, am I that blessed man? He says, this tree is not, the tree was not just planted anywhere, it was planted by what? The rivers of water. Rivers, I need you to look at that. Not just a river, but rivers of water. It reminded me of uh, uh, the Garden of Eden that has four rivers, a river that parted into four ways. Amen. Amen. And that, that river waters everything in the garden. So, are you planted in the right place, even though you are a tree? Even though you are this blessed man kind of a tree, are you planted in the right place? Because what will bring fruits in your season is determined by the resources you dig from. Amen? When there is no water for the tree, it will not be able to produce its fruits. Even though it's a tree. So you need to know where you are planted. And be sure that where you are planted can produce you the water that you need. 
Hallelujah. Prosperity. The Bible says that everything he does, whatever he does, I like that, whatever he does, shall prosper. Let's look at Joseph. You remember Joseph? Mm -hmm. Joseph, what a wonderful guy. Sold into slavery. His brother said, oh, he's dead. They lied on him. From, he was first of all dumped into the, into the ditch. From there sold him to slavery. From slavery went to prison for doing the right thing. For doing the right thing, he was in prison. Genesis chapter 39 verse 2 to 6 says, The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw. May the Lord make the Gentile to see in your life that God is with you. Amen. The master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Hello, church. <laughs> There's a message there. Yes. Yes. Joseph found favor in his sight and what? Served him. Served his master. Even though he was blessed of the Lord, he, was, he didn't come out and say, hey, the Lord blessed you because of me. So I think I need, we need to reverse the case that you become the boss. Mm. Pride did not set in. Mm. He served. Even at that level of being blessed of the Lord. At that level whereby God blessed his master because of him. Mm. So the master made him overseer over his house and all that he heard he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for who? For Joseph's sake. So the guy got more money, more material things, more wealth, more riches because of his slave. That is why anywhere you go to, don't, 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 don't run after position. If God will bless you, or let me rephrase that, if you are the blessed man, anywhere you go to, they will enjoy the blessings of God because of your presence there. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Because you are the blessed man. It does not matter who your boss is. <laughs> it does not matter who owns the company you are working for. Your presence in that place will make the difference. Either they know it or not, it is not your headache. You just keep positioning yourself in God that you remain a blessed man. Amen. For Joseph said, And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Amen. This, this, Joseph, was a slave. Mm -hmm. He was not a free man, physically speaking. But God was with him. This is the sign of a blessed man. Mm -hmm. Psalms 128 verse 2 to 4 says, When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine, in the very heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Thus shall the man be blessed. Look, when you sit down and your wife gives you good food, sir, like she normally does, eh? yes. and you sit down to eat that food and you are satisfied. It is an act of blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. Some because of food has lost what God has given them. Back in the days, you know, over 20 years ago, 
uh, before we got married, my wife and I, I have I went to so many meetings, you know, for uh, bachelors meetings and people preaching and all of that. And they do say that the way to a man's heart is his stomach, <laughs> is his belly. I laugh most of the time when they say it back then, but I understand better now. <laughs> Amen. I'm like, what is it? No, I don't believe that. I can cook my food by myself. But the moment I get married and the, the chairman of the kitchen changes the, the statues, and find that there's, there's food you eat, there's food you eat. <laughs> That's a big difference. And the kind of food we will cook, we even, you understand? Except we are chefs. Okay, you know. But even nevertheless, there's a touch of a woman. It's like every woman is graced and anointed for that. When they cook for their house, there's this satisfaction that it does not matter how, it's not how much. Are, are you with me? Amen. And that's what this Bible passage is saying. Say, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy. Some eat, they don't get happy. They are not, never satisfied. That's why it is possible for them, for that man, to be snatched away from him, from his wife with somebody else out there who is cooking for them. And they won't stop with that one other woman. Because they are never satisfied. We were sharing that earlier this morning, when, you know, before prayer meeting. That when a man sits down and, and all he thinks about the insatiability of human nature, then the man is heading for destruction. We now say that, okay, look at it. For you to be satisfied with your wife, to be satisfied with your husband, to be satisfied with the food you, you eat at home, to be satisfied with what God has given you, it is a blessing on its own. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So your children, like olive plants all around your table, behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Hallelujah. If therefore you say, you say that you are a believer in God and his son Jesus Christ, what to produce that people can see and drink from you? If all they can see and drink from you is anger, lies, sexual immoralities, backbiting, scornful essentials, and many more, then you are openly declaring who your source is. And definitely your source is not God. And it's not Jesus Christ. Because Jesus produces peace. The Bible says that he is our peace. And we know who the father of lies is. His name is the devil. He is, he, there's, this, there's this phrase I heard. I think I was watching movies sometimes. He said, that's what liars do. Liars lie. They lie. <laughs> That's what liars do. They, they lie. That's, that's their job. Why should you tell a liar not to lie? Because that's, I mean, that is what <laughs> we the Lord have mercy on us. Because they, the, Jesus said that they do what they do because they are of their father, the devil. And you can't claim that you know God when you produce ungodliness. You don't know God. Don't deceive yourself. Amen. Amen. Verse 4 says, The ungodly are not so, but are like what? The shaft which the wind drives away. The ungodly, these are the immoral people, those that practice immorality, not conforming to the standard of righteousness and holiness because of what their flesh and their bodies enjoy from their sinful acts. There's what the Bible describes as the pleasure of sin. May you not take pleasure in sin. Mm -hmm. You know, some people when they lie and they have their way out, they make people fear them and they think yes. They come here. I don't know if you have seen such pastors before or not necessarily pastors. Anyone who brags a lot and they, when they speak to you, they tell you lies upon lies, things they've never achieved in their life, they tell you they've done it. Because you were not there when, when they were growing, so you get